Gracing the cover of many a magazines is the historic building atop of Bridal Vale Falls here in the town of Telluride. And with me to talk about it is proprietor and operator Eric Jacobson. How are you doing today? Thank you, Mr. Romano. Doing very well. <laughs> Excellent. You used to live there year round. How is life now living up there summer or winter or, or how do you juggle? family and lifestyle. Well, it's so strange that a mile out of town, it's 500 years ago. It's avalanches, nature, wind, wood, heat. Uh, it's, it gets pretty primitive pretty quickly. And uh, we used to live up there full time, but due, due to some avalanche problems uh, with snow tractors and young children, my wife voted that we uh, not live there full time when it's terribly dangerous. An avalanche hit the tractor and actually knocked it from one switch back to the next and pulled the tracks off and completely buried the cab. And our daughter was only 18 months old and her mother was skiing up behind. And when she saw what the avalanche had done, um, new like, rules were put into effect. Done for the winter. Done for the winter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about the history of this building. When was it built and, and, and when was the hydro put in? The building was first envisioned in 1903, 1904 when the terrible labor strikes were happening in Telluride. Telluride is where uh, WFM started Western Federation of Miners and it was a very radical uh, somewhat violence oriented union and um, the mining company came down with terribly repressive measures to counter the union and so a lot of blood was shed. The mine manager at the time was Mr. Bulkley Wells who is very much a character in Telluride history and he so alienated the union that they attempted to blow him up in his bedroom. After his house was blown up, he decided he needed uh, A, a different house, and B, he wanted something that kind of fit his worldview of himself, and life on the waterfall fit his view. So he uh, appealed to his board of directors to build a summer house, which they promptly rejected. And then he asked them for funding to build a hydroelectric plant mm -hmm. and the mine needed power. He obtained corporate funding and just like magic, his summer house grew up on top of the hydroelectric plant. So it closed down and then you uh, restarted the hydro operations part of it, correct? Yeah, it ran over? until 1954. Mm -hmm. It was shut down and I started attempting to acquire it in 81 and met with success by 87 and then it took about three years to get the generator started in the building somewhat tight and so that's why the plant started up again in 91. Okay. So what kind of things is when you say operator what do you have to do to keep this plant running? There's a lake at 12,200 feet that holds it's one of the bigger natural lakes in Colorado and that lake provides the water which runs the plant. It's about 2,000 feet from that lake to the plant, so it's about 830 PSI gauge pressure going into the turbine. The turbine, in effect, is a big paddle wheel, and this high-pressure jet hits the paddle wheel called a Pelton wheel, and it spins and turns the generator, and then this very pure water goes back to the river. This being a renewable energy source, how how green is it? Well, I think it's probably one of the greenest power plants in the world simply because there are no fish in the lake and therefore there are zero deaths per kilowatt hour. Uh, any other power generation technology, be it wind, solar, uh, coal mining, you name it, something dies to make it. I think in all honesty you can say it's hard to be greener than Bridalville. Nice. And hydropower versus, as you said, solar power or wind power? Is it a preferred or is, how do you think it rates? It all depends. A wind turbine in a major avian flyway is a problem. A uh, hydropower plant on a major salmon run is a problem. And so siting is everything. There are better and worse sites and nobody gets a free pass because uh, any technology can cause problems if it's improperly sited. Bridalville is very fortuitous in that it's sited in a very benign location and as far as I can tell, the impacts of Bridalville are all positive mm. between clean water and clean electricity. Wow. Well, you've got yourself a very unique location up there. I guess you're not going anywhere now that you've got the lease for the next, well, 99 years. I guess that's a reason to eat my vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Mr. Romano. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Stay tuned.